Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look again at all of the concepts we talked about from industry structure to business processes and see how they're connected to our study of management information systems. So let's take a look at that. We've talked about how competitive strategy motivates business processes. Essentially you have to know the overall strategy that your business is following in order to actually flesh out the details of how you're going to go about creating value. And we create information systems to serve business processes. We talked a little bit about the website in the last video. We talked about the Best Bikes website that helps them sell bike parts to customers. We also talked about the different data repositories that they're working with, and then possibly how we could use information systems to connect customer sales with the different repositories in order to figure out which um, items we actually want to keep on buying from vendor vendors. So really, this is all connected here. The industry structure determines competitive strategy, which determines the value chain that we need to follow from our business, which motivates the business processes that we actually need to do in order to create money or create value in our system. So what I have right here is an example of two bike bicycle rental companies and the value chain that they are following in order to get value out of what they have. So they have a stock of bicycles and they're getting value out of that by renting out those bicycles and providing some sort of associated service with those bicycles. However, one of them is super cheap and their target market is more students who may not have a lot of money. So very basic like greeting interactions with the customer, very basic forms, rental forms, very basic payment systems, all that kind of stuff. On the other hand, you have this higher end company that is trying to target executives, you know, people who are extremely fancy and have a lot of money to throw around. And the service that they're providing is the same as the service to the low cost rental. But because they're trying to target a market that has a lot more money, what they're going to do is they're going to put in a lot more effort in order to try to get people to pay that extra cost. Because what they're doing is they're trying to provide a service that is so good that these executives will be like, okay, well, this is worth me spending extra money than going to the store where I have to pick up my own bike. So that's going to be stuff like tracking customer sales in order to make recommendations or do that, you know, going the extra mile kind of stuff in terms of like, oh, I totally remember you as a customer. Would you like to get the same thing? Would you like your usual? I mean, if you think about going to a restaurant, if you like it when employees see you as a regular and remember your regular order, this is the same kind of thing that they're going for here. They're investing extra money into their employees so that their employees are more motivated to try to upsell certain bikes or, you know, get the information that they need to match certain bikes to customers. They have inventory systems so that they can automate, you know, making sure that the right bike is actually in stock so that the customer doesn't have to, you know, manually search through a whole bunch of bikes themselves. Rather, rather you can just say, oh, well, our system says that we have this bike in stock, so you can rent this one, or if this is out of stock, can I recommend this one instead? And then you have automated inventory systems to place the, back, the bike back into inventory, which allows for really fast retrieval of bikes in the future. That's saving time and therefore money. You have prepaid payment documents that are all ready to go, super easy for the customer to fill out. You can integrate um, your billing system with maybe the billing system of a resort that, in this case, uh, this is a business that's located inside of a conference resort, so inside of a very fancy hotel, they have systems that are integrated with the resort's billing system, so the customer doesn't have to separately pay for their room and also the bike 
and so they can just get the build onto their room charge like you might with room service so they have all of these extra systems which up front cost some amount of money to develop but then provide this higher end experience for a customer that has that kind of money so what we have is a little bit of a process diagram for how the interactions with customers for this high service bike company actually works. So you have this greeting the customer, which in the previous example, uh, you know, they're greeting the customer and asking the customer if they would like to rent something that they had rented in the past. So this greeting the customer has uh, some sort of interaction with the customer database because they're able to make a query for customer data from that database and incorporate that into the greeting. And then, you know, you pass that customer data on and have that, you know, help determine the customer's needs. So you can keep in mind their picks that they did last time while also trying to upsell them. And that's actually where this query for an available upsell bike is, is if you are able to figure out the customer's needs and notice that a possible upsell is available, then you know, you're able to actually make that upsell. So that's an interaction with the bike inventory database. Um, when the customer selects a bike, uh, you pass that data along into the whole rent a bike interaction where you are actually, you know, helping the customer rent the bike, filling out the forms, all that kind of stuff. You update the bike inventory database and say, hey, this one particular bike has been rented out and you update the customer database and say this customer has rented out this particular bike. And then once the customer has actually returned everything, you have these um, whole interactions here where the, the customer has returned the bike. You update the customer data and say, hey, this customer is in good standing. They do not currently have a bike. Um, you update the bike return with the inventory database and say, hey, the bike is back in our inventory again. Uh, these interactions with the bicycle inventory here and then you have the hotel charge data where you're actually saying you're actually putting the charge of that bike into the hotel billing system but what we have here are three information or we have uh, three you have two databases we have a hotel billing system that we're interacting with but this whole thing constitutes an information system where we are generating value through all of these different pieces by using the databases that we have at our disposal. We are generating value through the upsells, through uh, meeting customer needs and showing the customer that they are to some extent cared for by this business. This is how, just an example of how we're generating value with our information system here. The idea with running this high service process here is that we can afford to develop these inventory databases. We can afford to develop our systems because our customers are paying such a high cost. And then the results are contributing to the, making a better product, which then justifies the high cost and makes customers come back for more. So we end up with this cycle where the high, the amount of money that we're making from customers allows us to further develop our systems, which then provide more value, give us a higher value service, which then bring customers back in to use our service and our products more and so on and so forth. It's this, if we uh, continue to improve our systems and make better processes and stuff like that, using some of the profits that we've made by selling a high cost service, we end up in this loop where we're generating more and more and more money, well, value out of our system through our investments into our information systems. So in our businesses, we want to generate a competitive advantage. We want to make our products or services stand out above other competitors. And by doing so, we will make sure that we have a consistent consumer base so that we can continue making product. And there's two ways of creating a competitive advantage, and that's through your products 
and through your business processes. And we're going to look at how information systems can help us attain a competitive advantage in both of these ways. So when you're actually trying to gain a competitive advantage through products, you're going to do that through either offering new products, through enhancing existing products, or differentiate products from the existing products that are already out there in the market. You're either making something new and flashy, you're making some sort of improvement on something that's already out there, or you are making yours stand out in some way. And then when it comes to creating a competitive advantage via business processes, uh, Porter actually figured out five different ways that you can do that. The first is by locking in a customer. You're either going to want to make your customers so happy that they don't want to switch over to another competitor, or you want to make the cost of them switching over, which is known as the switching cost, you want to make that extremely high so that the customer is decentivized from actually switching. And that might be through actually charging them to switch, or that might be through making the process so long and convoluted and annoying that they're not going to want to switch. And if you ever have tried to cancel your cable service or your internet or something like that, and you have to go through hours of sitting on the phone waiting for a company to uh, actually let you cancel their service, you're sitting through with hours while they bring you to their like customer retention specialist or offering you new deals or something like that. And the, the whole process is really, really convoluted. Then you've experienced a high switching cost. If you, especially if you have just reconsidered, you know, maybe I'm just going to keep it because I don't want to deal with this. Another way to get a competitive advantage is to lock in your suppliers in such a way that they are not able to actually supply a competitor. So if you can gain some sort of contract where your supplier can't work with anyone else, or if you can provide such a good price that your suppliers won't work with anyone else, then that is locking in the supplier. And when you have a supplier locked in, it's going to be extremely hard for another competitor to do the same thing that you're doing. You could create an entry barrier. Maybe your service or your technology is so good that anyone else who wants to really compete with that isn't really able to get into the market because they would then have to design all of these competing systems to yours. And if they're doing that, then that would cost so much money up front before they can even start selling anything or offering their service or anything like that, that it might just be impossible for them to get off the ground. So if you imagine, you know, trying to compete with Amazon in terms of the product aggregation and selling aspect of their business, you would have to create a very powerful website, very powerful databases in order to host that website. You would have to create really powerful um, customer tracking systems so that you can make really good recommendations to customers so that customers will keep on buying from you. You have to create all of these systems and Amazon has this huge head start. They have a huge amount of power. They, they have a lot going for them and they have essentially created this entry barrier where if you're trying to get a competitor to Amazon started, you would have to invest possibly millions of dollars in order to actually make something that people would consider going from. So you can't really make a competitor to Amazon because they've created that huge entry barrier. Establishing an alliance is another way of getting a competitive advantage. And I think an interesting example of this is if you look at certain cans of energy drink or snacks or something like that, that have video game advertisements on them, what this is, is you have this alliance between, say, the people who make the video games and the people who produce the snacks or the drinks in order to gain some sort of mutual benefit for both of them. The uh, video game company benefits because they get extra advertising. You know, someone who might want to buy an energy drink would see, oh, hey, they have this partnership with this video game. I should check out this game or something like that. Uh, 
maybe, you know, usually these partnerships have something like, oh, you get extra gear or extra money or extra experience points in our game if you buy this product and then redeem this code. So a customer might be like, okay, well, I get the drink that I already wanted or the snack that I already wanted, but I also get these points or this added benefit. Or, you know, it's like, I really want this added benefit, so I'm willing to buy this food in order to get the added benefit. Now, the that ties into how the snack company uh, benefits because they get a customer who maybe they're just buying this snack because they want those added benefits in the game. Or maybe they get a customer who says, I really wanted a snack, but I'm going to choose this one. I'm more likely to choose this one because of this added benefit I get for a game that I already play. So this is an example of an alliance where two companies are working together in order to generate additional value that they might not have had previously. And then finally, a business can reduce the cost of their processes in order to gain a competitive advantage. Maybe they're, they're reducing costs and then offering their products at a lower cost to the consumer. Or maybe they reduce the cost, they don't change the price to the consumer, so then they're getting more value out of the system than they were before. And by reducing costs, you know, they, they get that extra value. They can then invest that extra value into making their systems better, gaining other types of competitive advantages, all that kind of stuff. So reducing costs here, this might come from streamlining the business process or using better, um, like say, manufacturing techniques, getting better deals from vendors who are providing your inputs, all that kind of stuff that can lead to a competitive advantage through, you know, lower prices to the consumer, meaning higher market share or the higher purchases or by using that extra value that you might gain to build up a better process, build up a new information system, all that kind of stuff. So these are the five ways of gaining competitive advantage through a business process. Now, information systems can be part of a product or a service. They can also support a product or a service. And this essentially is how information systems are creating competitive advantages, either through the product or through the business process. So for example of an information system being part of a product, um, if you think about a car's GPS, a inbuilt GPS in a car as opposed to say using your phone to as a GPS when you're driving your car. The inbuilt GPS would be an information system because it's taking data about where you're currently located and data from different GPS satellites as well as data um, about you know the different roads and maps and such that you have within that GPS system. It combines all three of those pieces of data to give the user information about where they are, what streets might be coming up, you know, navigation information, all that kind of stuff. So that is an information system that is part of a product that can also be used to maybe differentiate that car from other cars that don't have a GPS in it. Or maybe your GPS is really good, so that information system is enhancing a uh, enhancing uh, that car as opposed to other cars that are on the market. Or imagine the first car that even had a GPS system like that. So that would count as a new product. It is a car that, wow, this one has a GPS system in it. No other car has that. That would drive a lot of people to buy that particular car and thus creates a competitive advantage. Now, information systems that are supporting a product and service, that would be something like, you know, when I talked about Amazon, I talked about their system that takes in information about what customers are looking at and buying, what pages they're visiting, what searches they're making, all that kind of stuff, and gives recommendation and how that uh, in different ways creates uh, adv competitive advantages via their business processes because that information system is part of the process of recommending new products to users and making users buy those products that would be supporting their service through giving information that they can then use to market to customers to make them buy more products to keep on using 
Amazon's service and to disincentivize them from using other services who don't have nearly as good of recommendation services. So that's an example of information systems that give competitive advantages through the business process side of things. So this is why all of the material that we've covered in this chapter is relevant because we're taking a look at all of these models and we're seeing how we can use information systems to give us the best possible competitive advantage. Now you'll learn more about things like industry structure and competitive advantage and all of that kind of stuff in other classes. And what we really want to focus on here going forward in this class is how we're using the information systems to create that competitive advantage. I spend all this time talking about business processes and value chains and all that kind of stuff because of the interactions that we'll have when we actually create an information system. We'll need to keep all of that information in mind to motivate us to create the best possible information system. That's why we're talking about all of those terms, why we're looking at all these different models. So with all that, thank you very much for watching this material. The last video that you'll be looking at is the ethics video for this week, where we'll be talking about utilitarianism.